welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of the Topper Talk podcast. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, and if you have uh, followed our social media or listened to our podcast for any amount of time over the last year and a half that we've been uh, recording and putting out shows and content, you have undoubtedly heard her name uh, mentioned in our Red Tail wrap-ups with all the excellent things she's done uh, during her time as a student athlete here on the Hill. So I've got senior lady topper golfer Katie Craig joining me to talk about uh, her time here at Western. And Katie, uh, welcome to the show and thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Stephen. I have to ask, because you're obviously pretty good at this golf thing. What age did you start golfing? Um, so I started, I first picked up a club when I was two, um, but I would say, say competitively, I was five years old, just playing little six hole uh, tournaments at Northwest Florida, um, the first tee. And then from there on, I never stopped playing. I, I can believe that. Now, at, at what point during your playing days i guess getting into the competitive side of it like when did you realize like i'm pretty good at this maybe this is going to take me to you know the collegiate level or maybe even the professional level someday when did that realization set in for you um probably middle school is when i realized um this is something i could actually uh do as a career when i was little i always remembered i never wanted to play pro i always just told my parents i just want to be like them and just have fun and play golf but now that I am headed towards the pro path, uh, path, I'm really grateful for that, and I'm excited. And uh, playing in college has been so much fun too. Yeah, I think it's perfect that you mentioned your parents because you know, from what I can see from the outside looking in, like golfing and your family really seems like a it's a family mm-hmm. affair. Obviously, your sister played at Georgia and at Indiana before moving into the coaching ranks. And from what I can tell, it seems like your mom is at every tournament that you play in. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, how special are those moments, you know, when you and your sister have gotten to play together or just having your mom there with you when you're competing? Oh, my gosh. It's been so much fun. Uh, my dad also comes to all of them, too, or at least uh, if one can't come to the other, we'll switch off. Um, but playing with my sister and things like the U.S. women's four ball, uh, we did that this year. We actually broke a record to de- together. And then my mom caddied for me at Q school. And then my dad has caddied for me before. But other than that, they've always been on the sidelines supporting my sister and I. And it's just been an incredible experience to do it as a family. Yeah, I I definitely can see that from the outside. I I, would really love the support that I see there. Um, Mm -hmm. Before we jump into your, you know, your career here so far at Western, you know, let's talk about your high school career because, you know, I pull up your bio and I just see all these accolades. You know, you were the Blitz Golfer of the Year in 2018, 2019, and 20. Uh, you won the 4A state championship in 2018. You were the runner-up at 19. You know, what would you say was the highlight of those high school playing days for you? I think just being with all of my friends on the team, for sure. And then, of course, my sister was on the team as well. Um, I would have to say that was the main part. I. I didn't travel to a lot of the little matches. I usually played in just the 18 hole events, um, but every single tournament I played in, I cherished it with uh, my friends alongside of me. Yeah, and then when it came to the recruiting side of things, you obviously, mm-hmm. you know, on the successful side of things, you're doing pretty good there. You know, three time player of the year. Um, when it came to the recruiting, who are some of the other schools and programs that were looking at you before you ultimately chose to come to WKU? Yeah, so I reached out to a lot of coaches first. That's typically how it worked. Um, But during my recruiting process, they changed the rules to that. I believe it's the June 15th rule of your junior year. So I talked to a lot of coaches such as um, Augusta, Georgia, Georgia Southern, um, University of North Georgia, which is a really good D2 I was looking at. It was kind of closer to my home. Um, And then when they changed the rule, I had to kind of drop all contact with them and go a few months without um, being in the recruiting process. And then once the June uh, 15th came around, uh, Adam reached out to me, um, didn't even know what uh, Western Kentucky was, but he watched me at a few tournaments. I didn't 
play my best at those, but he really appreciated my attitude and effort and how I hold held myself. Um, so he invited me to uh, visit. Yeah. So, and then once you visited, I guess what what was the selling point or what made this decision to come to Western Kentucky? You know, really be you know what you decided on. Um, oh, there's so many reasons. I really enjoyed Adam um, and his company uh, taking me around. Uh, I didn't really hang out with the team um, recently, like when I have or when we have recruits come around nowadays, uh, we hang out with them a lot. But I got to meet him for a little bit of time at the golf courses. And then he toured me to places like Old Stone and Bowling Green and Indian Hills. And I really liked the variety of golf courses. And then at the time, the uh, Philip Hatchet indoor facility was being built. And I think that was a really big seller to have an area to go to in the winter to get numbers um, and all the data, like the putt view and the technology offered. And then I love the trainers like John Irwin and Rebecca. Um, and then the campus is just beautiful. Uh, I really like the community and the downtown is so cute as well. Also, um, my major is offered here, horticulture and agronomy. So that was a really big seller because not, not many universities offer it. Yeah, I can. I, I agree with you. Our staff, is that, you know, trainer. You mentioned John Irwin. He's one of my favorite on staff, and it's always been my uh, opinion that if we get recruits to come to campus and see, you know, our university, even if you've never heard of us, you know, down in Georgia, you've mm -hmm. never heard of, of Western Kentucky University, but you come to Bowling Green, Kentucky, nice small town vibe, but big enough that has you know plenty of stuff to do and see and places to eat, and then you see campus, and it's. It's amazing. And granted, it seems like it's always under construction, but they're always improving and investing back into the campus. So I, I really love this place. And I'm glad that you obviously decide to come here. Um, you're the first recruit or the first athlete that I've talked to that wasn't also being tempted by Middle Tennessee University. So I'm um, so thankful for that. No. Yeah, you know, we you know, we don't like them. Um, yeah, jumping in, jumping into your college career. Um, your freshman year, you know, jumped in and had a good showing. You had an average uh, stroke score of 77.4 strokes per round. Uh, you had a best finish of 22nd at the Lady Paladin Invitational. And you were named to the Conference USA All-Academic Team to Commissioner's Honor Roll. Uh, and you earned a CUSA Commissioner's Academic Medal. And you were on the President's List of Fall of 21 and Spring of 22. And you know, as much as I love the athletic stuff, you know, I really, you know, try to shine a lot of light on all of our athletes and all the successes they have. I also love the back half of that where you had all the academic successes mm -hmm. as well, because you come here to be a student. You already mentioned your major and just uh, how important that is to you that we offer it here. So, you know, how you know, looking back now at your freshman year, you know, how much did that season help prepare you for the successes that you would have your next couple of years here on the Hill? Yeah, um, it was a huge change. So I appreciate your uh, saying I played good that year, but personally, it was a very low spot in my career. Um, it's not talked about a lot, but I had a lot of um, mental issues like mindset while I played, um, not being able to commit to any shots, getting kind of run down with putting in so much effort and get getting no results out. It took a toll on me for a really long time. And I talked to Adam about it after my freshman year. I was like in his office saying like, this is a really poor performance on my side and I'll do anything I can to get better and not stop uh, improving. So then uh, sophomore year is where, where I really kind of matured with my swing and then got with a mental coach and surrounded myself with a community of things like FCA and my friends and family. Um, so then my mindset was in check and then my swing was in check and then from there, um, I increased or I dropped my scoring average by seven strokes. So I'd say it worked. Yeah, I think, granted, I'm not a, a golfer at all. So when I see 77, that to me, that's still pretty good because I feel like if I was out there, I'm shooting triple digits. So um, I know you're holding yourself to a really high standard. And as we talk about your next couple of years, you can see um, you were your harshest critic and, and you backed it up with your play on the field. I'm, I'm glad you surrounded yourself with a good support system that helped mm -hmm. you get there because, you know, 2023, you win the uh, Conference USA individual champion title, uh, the first lady Hilltopper ever to win that conference tournament. Um, you are the first ever lady topper to compete in the NCAA regional, uh, tying for 31st in that uh, competition. Uh, you were named the Conference USA Most Improved Golfer of the Year. 
Uh, you dropped your scoring average to 74.6. Uh, what won two tournaments? You were a top five finisher in five events, uh, top twenty five and seven. And again, on the CS, the commissioner's academic medal and the commissioner's honor roll and the academic all district third team. So, you've already talked about some of those successes or the reason for the successes. You know, how did it feel after that freshman year where you felt like you struggled and just weren't playing up to your ability? How did it feel after that second year to finally see? all that hard work and that preparation and that just everything come to fruition and it really showed on the golf course. Oh yeah. I mean, I was so thankful for that to kind of go my way, I guess it was really an answered prayer. Um, but golf is so hard in that aspect of it's a game of mistakes and who can just make the least amount of mistakes. And it's very different from other sports. Um, so working with my mental game and seeing results from that was really pleasing to see. And I know there's so many people out there who still work on that and still don't see results, but I would just tell them like, keep working. Cause I've had ups and downs my whole life playing golf. Shoot, it's been what, 19 years and not every year has been a good year, but when they are good, I really appreciate them and don't take them for granted. Yeah. And then it looks like, you know, your junior year last year, everything just kind of, just top notch. I mean, you're conference USA golfer of the week on five occasions, uh, dropped your scoring average to 70.26. So, you know, from that initial 77 deal, like you said, down seven strokes, uh, the best stroke average in program history. Um, you had two individual victories. You're the top finisher in all 10 events. You're top 10 at all events. Um, you finished tied for fourth at the championship. The team was third. Uh, again, all academic first team, uh, second year in a row, commissioner's academic medal, um, just all these things. Uh, and then you earned a bid to the NCAA uh, region tournament in East Lansing where you finished 56. So, you know, now this this past summer, um, heading into your senior year, you competed at the U.S. Amateur Open. Uh, you got to, like you said earlier, you got to play with your sister uh, and made it to the round of 16 match play at the U.S. Women's Amateur Four Ball Tournament. Uh, you also finished uh, tied for 23rd at the Sea Island Amateur Tournament in June. And then you won the 122nd Women's North and South Amateur uh, Tournament. So just a crazy busy summer for you. What, you know, what has that been like? I mean, you got to play with your sister. You mentioned that earlier. Um, and I love and in, in all these tournaments that you're in, you're always representing Western Kentucky. You always <laughs> got the hat on or you're wearing some shade of red somewhere on your outfit. So you know, what has this just crazy summer been like for you leading up into your senior year? Yeah, I mean, being the last uh, year of being an amateur, um, every single summer for my whole life, I've been playing in tournaments and I really wanted to go out with a bang and represent Western in the best way possible and uh, put it on the map, um, played all over the country um, this year in places like Oklahoma and Texas and Illinois and places I've never been to. Um, so to be able to represent Western um, my final year before senior year was really fun. And then obviously you just got done uh, qualifying for the LPGA Q series. You mentioned your mom being on the back for that, uh, finishing at a four under 284, uh, the top 35, obviously advancing to the final qualifying. So really huge accomplishment for you as you're looking forward to those pro aspirations. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say coming into now your senior year, you know, spring season, it's just going to be right around the corner, you know, as we're into early November here, you know, what are your goals for yourself and your team for this final season that you have? Oh, for sure. So my, my personal goal is to, um, I don't know if you know Mary Joyner, but she had six college individual wins. I'd love to surpass that or at least higher. Uh, that would be really, really fun to do. And then of course, as a team, if we could just win as many um, tournaments as possible so then we can get a pick into regionals without having to win conference would be the really easy way because we've never been as a team and I'd love to go as a team. Um, going alone the past two years has been a really grateful opportunity, but I'd love to see all five of us be there. Um, and then, of course, I'd love us to win conference. Um, I don't think we have. We've taken second place, um, but to get the win would be a really cool thing to do, especially uh, it being my last year. 
I think the talent's there. You know, I know from your perspective, I think it is. And, I, you know, from what I've seen from the other girls uh, in this fall season, I, I really have high hopes for the team and the program uh, moving forward into the spring. I have to talk about one of my favorite things that I see from from Coach Adam is the the uh, worms for birdies. <laughs> well, I see that at tournaments. And then also the Big Red uh, Head Club covers. So, I know we have a lot of avid golfers in WKU and probably people that are listening to this. I guess tell us about both of those uh, and especially those, the club covers, how they can be purchased because I know they go back to help support WKU golf. Yeah. So um, the gummies, we call it Feed the Bird. So whenever we get a birdie on the golf course, he will come by and give us some gummies just as a kind of a pick me up and a positive reinforcement for performing well um, and kind of not adding pressure on us to do well, but rewarding us. And then our um, head covers, the big red head covers, we have also have these really cool white ones with a giant towel on it we got this year. I, I want to say it looks so clean. Like we are the cleanest looking team on the course out of any team that's out there. Um, but you can purchase those um, through Adam Gary, uh, WKU Coach Gary on Instagram. You can just DM him, say, hey, I want a head cover. Uh, he'll feel free to have, he'll be very happy to um, reach out and tell you the pricing. Yeah, I've got to check those out. Like I said, I'm not a golfer, but I would love to have a couple of those behind me for <laughs> the backdrop of my studio. Cause just the big red one looks awesome. And if you're saying the white one is clean as well, then I might have to check those out. Um, lastly, before I let you get out of here, you know, we've talked about some of your, you know, the pro aspirations, I guess, you know, heading into your senior year now, what, you know, what is next for Katie? after WKU, after your playing career is over? Obviously, you've got this the Q school still coming up. You've got the Epson tour uh, exemption now there at your mm -hmm. fingertips. So, you know, what's your hope for after your WKU playing career is over? Yeah, so um, I went through stage one at Q school back in August and then stage two uh, just a couple weeks ago. And I have the opportunity to go to stage three, but I would have to give up my amateur status and not play on the team anymore. So I emailed them. I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm staying in college. Um, a lot of amateurs move on to stage three, but college is like the one and only opportunity like I can get once while uh, Epson and LPGA is there forever. And I'd love to finish my senior year. Of course, I committed to this college. I'm going to finish it. Um, but come May after I graduate, I have uh, it's called D status on Epson tour. Um, I guess you could say it's like the minor leagues of golf. It's the level just below LPGA. And D status gets me um, a lot of priority when it comes to signing up for the professional tournaments. And each tournament you play in, there's like a point system. So the higher you finish, the more points you get. And then the top 15 or so at the end of the year get their LPGA card. That's outstanding. Obviously, I hope you know we can't wait to cheer you on, not only for your senior season, but as you move into your professional career beyond uh, WKU. We are very excited to watch that unfold. Katie, I have to thank you for coming on and telling your story to our listeners. It's been a pleasure to highlight your successes on the court and in the classroom uh, during your tenure here at Western Kentucky. And I do wish you and your teammates a great spring season coming up. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. You're very welcome. Go Tops. Go Tops.